Hey everyone, it's me, Dr. E, and thanks for joining me for the third Thursday Lunch and Learn for October of 2021. And it's called Workstation Ergonomics and Support Accessories. And for you guys at home, this is going to be backwards that says chiropractic rocks, if you can't tell. And I'm going to draw a little bit, but um, I brought some of my favorite um, supports and pillows and ice packs and things like that. I've been a chiropractor for 30 years, and I will be honest, I screeched in here side, sideways about seven minutes ago with all my stuff. And uh, But you know what? I've been saying, saying this stuff and talking about these items for years and years and years and years. So I can wing it because this is what I do all the time. So I'm gonna talk about, if you read the list on the Facebook event page, we have the myth of the perfect chair, posture mindfulness, optimize your computer setup, your keyboard, your mouse strategies, good lumbar support when sitting chair for a chair and car, pillows, a little bit about mattresses, about ice being your secret sauce and the best ice pack, and um, whether your ergonomic challenges manifest as headaches, neck or back pain, leg pain, or uh, even mouse forearm and tennis elbow from doing it, 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 it all day long, this is gonna cover all of that stuff. So chiropractic rocks, this is my, I free handed a little green spine here. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer so it looks a little bit bigger. Um, and then after the fact, I counted the vertebra because there's supposed to be seven in your neck, 12 in your thoracic spine, and five in your lumbar spine, unless you're lucky like me, I have an extra one, which makes me an inch taller. But, um, and I counted and I was one off, so I took it out of the sacrum, which is right down here. So this is the front. This is your front, this direction. And then this is the back. So your neck, the idea of having supports like lumbar pillows and, and sleeping pillows and mattresses that support you and don't have holes in them or too soft and sag is you want to support your spine in these curves. So just, I see there's a little bit of glare. So for here you got, here's your neck facing, facing this way. There's your, your, I didn't draw the head in there. Your mid back and your lower back. You're supposed to have a curve here. You're supposed to have a curve in your neck this way with your head on top of it and your head should be over your spine as soon as your head starts shifting when we start getting text neck uh, spend too much time with our head hunched forward too much time our device on our devices this starts to shift forward and then here's our little head and your head starts to get carried anterior to your spine. When that happens, the weight of your head, which is about an eight pound bowling ball, um, biomechanically is more stable for your whole spine sitting right over your spine. It's, it's balanced. As soon as things shift forward, you create neck tension and upper back tension and neck pain and headaches and you lose that curve in your neck because we're doing this all the time and do not use your phone in bed with your head on a pillow and I do listen to podcasts sometime late at night so sometimes I do have my phone nearby but don't do that sitting on the pillow and then doing this because it's just you, it feels crappy doesn't it if something feels crappy don't do it that's your body saying don't do it all right um back to my agenda the myth of the perfect chair so patients ask me a lot about what is the best chair to use um, usually for working. And um, there you can spend thousands of dollars on uh, the perfect chair. And it's, it's a lot of money to spend if you get it and your back still hurts or whatever problem you were trying to solve by having a better chair, um, you didn't solve it. And then you just end up more broke and aggravated because it didn't work. So, I always suggest to my patients that yes, use a comfortable chair. However, part of the problem that we get from sitting all day long is whatever posture we're in, we're frozen static in that position for that chair that we're sitting in. 
So if one chair has you sit a certain way with your pelvis and your back and the way your shoulders are, and you're that way for eight hours a day, even a great chair, you're going to have issues. So I recommend that people actually have more than one chair they can swap out. It's like, so simple, but mind blowing, right? So um, because a different chair will have you sit slightly differently. I mean, they both should be okay chairs. Do not need to spend $2,000 on a chair. But, but switch what you sit in because the other chair will support you a little bit differently. So your ergonomics will change a little bit. And even though you might be there for a few hours, you're not doing one thing for eight hours. You're challenging your body slightly differently for different periods of time. And that can be beneficial. Standing desks, it can, it can be hard using a standing desk all the time. And they do have, I think Ikea even sells, an adjustable one that can stand or sit. Even better is alternate how you stand. If you have a, if you're working from home and you have a kitchen with a, a bar height table, stand and work there some of the time and then sit down. The variety of how you challenge your posture differently during the day because there, if the reality is you're just going to be on the computer for eight or more hours a day. Um, mix it up so that you don't do the same horrible thing to your back in exactly the same way for that whole period of time. So does that make sense? So that's why I call it the myth of the perfect chair because even a $2,000 crazy ergonomic yada yada chair, um, you can get away with two good office chairs that slight support you slightly differently and just swap them out and save yourself a pile of money. You're welcome. Okay, posture mindfulness. Uh, that's a little bit what I was talking about with your spine, about having ideally, biomechanically for your spine, you should have your head over your spine with a curve in your back with not too much hunching through here. So your back extensor muscles need to be strong. You need to work out at least a little bit and be fit. When your muscles are fit, your whole body copes with everything long, uh, better. And then your lower back should have a curve in it and not too much where your backside's sticking out or just, um, and when you're walking, when you're riding in a car, just when you carry your body around, or I guess your body actually carries you around through the day, being conscious of that posture, you can't be perfect all of the time, but when, it's, when you catch yourself, if you see your reflection in walking past a storefront on the street and you're shuffling along and you're, and you're doing this or you're on your phone, or you catch yourself and police yourself because why suffer through all of the stuff that all of those bad habits create because of stuff that you're doing because you're just not paying attention. So that's what I mean about posture mindfulness. All right, optimize your computer setup, keyboard and mouse strategies. I forgot my mouse, I knew it. It's attached to my computer down the hall. So um, your keyboard monitor, again, thinking about how your neck and your shoulders are, in my previous office, we discovered, we had a little computer hutch and the computer sitting inside the hutch, I think it must have gone on for a, you know, a year or two before we realized there was a little bit more room available on top of the hutch and we found out that a ream of copier paper underneath the computer monitor raised it enough that made it com more comfortable for everybody and that little bit can make a difference. So pay attention to your, the height of your computer screen if you, can, if you can adjust it. We didn't go buy a fancy stand, we used a ream of copier paper and then if we ever ran out of paper, we just had to remember that that's where it was until we got another box. Um, but that height helped everyone who used that computer and that was a computer that multiple people would use during the day. Uh, keyboards and mouses and trackpads. Oddly enough, people often present to me uh, in my office with sort of like tennis elbow sort of pain, which is pain on the side of your elbow and down your forearm. And they're like, oh God, what's wrong with my elbow? Well, you know, when you have that kind of pain, it's not your elbow, it's what you're doing with your wrist. 
what happens when you do things that lift your wrist up, the muscles and tendons that make that action happen attach here. So if you're overusing, this is called extension in your wrist, this is where it will hurt. So if you're using a mouse or your keyboard is set up so you're constant, you're like this, you need to do something where your arms are gonna be more flat. Mouse, computer mouses, I like using a trackball mouse. Um, and that has the ball in the middle with clickers on either side. Because instead of like eh, 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 all day long, which Bob not only bothers here, but this, how far is that moving up my body? Here's a click, 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 click. You're moving shoulder. It causes tension in your traps, your upper thoracic spine, your neck. So if you're using a traditional mouse, especially if you're, if you're using the mouse that came with your inexpensive computer, chances are that mouse is a piece of crap and it doesn't even, it doesn't catch all the time. The, the rubber tracker or the laser on the bottom doesn't work really well. Spent, this time, spend some money. Uh, the trackball mouse that I use, it's about $35 and I've used the same one for years and years and years and years. Um, laptop track pads um, have attended just pay attention this is sort of the with mindfulness pay attention to how you're holding your hands so you want to get away from this and to more flat and not doing this with your arm and not having problems now I will say that all of the things that I'm going to talk about today uh, are found on my resource page on uh, www.bodyharmonyarlington.com there's a tab that says resources and there's lots of stuff there um, articles and books and things like that but the first section is all of these things that I'm talking about today including the mouse that I forgot to unplug from my computer and bring down with me here to the conference room so um, good lumbar support okay so we've got covered we've got the computer the mouse strategies get a trackball mouse or use a trackpad that doesn't make you do this. Lumbar support. I brought my lumbar pillow from my, look, I, this has been well used and well loved. I actually have it uh, in my car and it's all mushed up and I try not to drive anywhere without it. In fact, if I fly somewhere and I know that I will be driving a rental car for an extended period of time, I will stick it in my suitcase because cheap cars have crappy lumbar support and you don't want to ruin a trip and I've known people who have ruined their trips because their back is hurting because of their crappy rental car. I used to have this great little Audi that somebody totaled, another story, with all of these inflatable things and pneumatic stuff and the chair would adjust a hundred different ways. I still used this, even with all that. So if you think, well, my car has lumbar support, my chair has lumbar support, it's probably not enough. This particular support is made by a company called Core Products, Apple Core, Core Products, and this is called a Slim Rest. And I like the Slim Rest because a lot of lumbar pillows out there have an edge that comes out really far and sharp, and it doesn't fit so many people's posture and you and it's it just it's annoying getting in and out from your chair because it, it doesn't need to be sticking out that far it needs to not be down here when you're sitting it should be in right in the small of your back and just giving a little bit of support in your desk chair or your car chair and this particular one it comes with a strap that works in your office desk that you can so it doesn't fall over when you get up I confess, this falls over every single time I get out of my car and I get in the car and I have to lift it up and <laughs> hold it there while I get in. Do it anyway, do it anyway. It's that, um, too bad it's annoying. Do it anyway, because your car probably needs lumbar support. All right, sitting chair pillows, speaking. Here's my favorite sleeping pillow. So this is memory foam. This is called I Love My Pillow, which is I Heart My Pillow. These are made in the USA. They're not Chinese, they're made in Michigan. 
by a family who's been making them for 25 years. It's not the pillow guy that who has been in the news about political stuff and all that kind of, not that. This is called I Love My Pillow. This is, was $54 on Amazon.com. The links to all of these are they're on my resource page. When you click on it, it'll take you right to the, to the product. So this is a, a, a really nice density of memory foam that when you lie on your side, it just kind of deforms to however much support you need. It's really flexible for different size and types of people. Now regarding whether or not you're a back sleeper or a side sleeper, if you're a stomach sleeper, try to get off your stomach because that is bad for your lower back because it jams everything together. So try shoot for your back and your side. Your goal, remember about the posture mindfulness, even though you've got curves front to back, curve, 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 straight on, Unless you've got some scoliosis, which means you should be seeing a chiropractor and getting massage to help out with that anyway, your spine should be straight up and down. When you're sleeping, you should not be like this with your, a kink in your neck all night long with too, too soft of a pillow. You shouldn't have too much of a pillow that has your head the other way. Your goal should be to have your spine straight up and down and support under your neck, which this fits right in, you rest and your spine should be straight. And this deforms a little bit under your head, but it still supports your neck. If you sleep on your back, it does the same things. And it says, I love my pillow. I love, I love this pillow. I have easily spent over the years, over $2,000 on every pillow and support and all those things that you can think of because I wanted to know for me and I wanted to know for my patients what I thought were the best ones. Now memory foam pillows, sometimes you can see that they, they have humps in them. I've tried them. They tend to be less flexible for different body types and sizes. So you have to be really particular about um, the one that you get for your shoulder width and your neck length and the size of your body and all of that and you don't have to worry about that with this pillow so so get that one all right moving on to okay I did say a little bit about mattresses talk about dumping a bunch of money on something that if it doesn't work your bank account gets a ding and it's annoying because your back hurts. Your back shouldn't hurt. A clue to whether or not your mattress is part of your back problem is if you wake up in the morning and your back hurts more than when you went to sleep at night. That's a really good indicator that something is wrong with your mattress. Usually it means it's too soft. It's either too old and so it's sagging or the new mattress that you bought, you bought and it was too soft to begin with. Usually people, when they go to a mattress store, number one, the people who work there, it's like a used car lot where they come running over and they're trying to like, oh, it's, it's like some like, let's make a deal thing with mattresses. And when I go into a store to purchase a mattress, they come over and I say, stop, <laughs> I'm a chiropractor. I will try out every single mattress in here. When I find what I want, then I will let you know. And they stand on the other side of the room and they watch me lie on my different mattresses and then one guy was like after i picked out my mattress uh he said i'm going to tell everybody this is the one the chiropractor got so a good rule of thumb is a go a little bit more firm than you think you need because you can always soften up a too firm mattress then make a too soft mattress from a, it's if it's too soft you're screwed and you just lost all that money if it's too firm, either as you use it, it'll sort of break into you, or you can get some sort of memory foam topper that will soften it up, and with age, it will soften, soften up. So a too firm mattress is workable at least. But people often pick the too soft one because when you lie in it initially, it feels nice and cozy and comfy, and if it's feeling like that, it's probably too soft. It's not necessarily the best thing for you to sleep on all night long. All right, moving on to ice packs. 
I brought two today. Rattle, rattle, rattle. So this is a cheesy little one that came in. I had shoulder surgery a few years ago, so we always have an assortment of ice packs in the freezer. Uh, just because when anything traumatic happens to your body, the first thing you should do is not put heat on it, you should put ice on it. I don't care if it's cold outside, and if you don't like ice, put ice on it, because it'll, ice is analgesic. It'll help uh, tra trauma calm down. If you're gonna bruise, it'll help constrict the blood vessel so you won't bruise as much. And so, and you can never hurt yourself with ice. So I, I tell my patients, when in doubt, if you're not sure to put heat on it, put ice on it, there's very little few things that really you should put heat on it if it's a traumatic inflamed situation. Uh, choose ice first because you can't make anything worse by putting ice on something you don't need to put ice on. But if you put heat on something you're not supposed to put heat on, you can make it worse. So err on the side of caution and do ice. So anyway, this is a cheesy little gel one and we use it. Um, and it's a little bit softer now because it's been out of my freezer for about 30 minutes. Um, but my favorite ice pack that I typically sell in my office, it's called, it's by, it's, it's uh, called a coal pack. And these typically are, they're wonderful gel packs that mold to whatever shape you want and they keep their cold intensity and their vinyl, they don't break and leak. This one has got to be at least six years old, so it's starting to lose a little bit of its flexibility, uh, but, and brand new, they are just like butter. They're wonderful, and these will easily last 10 years, and I have been using these cold packs for over 20 years, 25 years, something like that. So um, that is my recommendation for cold packs. That is called the half size cold pack, uh, and then this, don't use ice cubes in a Ziploc bag because they're lumpy, they leak, they don't have good contact with your body parts. Um, if you don't have a nice cold pack and you need a, to put ice on something, go to the store and get a bag of frozen peas for a buck and a half or lima beans or something like that and use that because that will also, part of it working well, an ice pack working well, is that it deforms to the shape that you need to be in and a bunch of ice cubes in a Ziploc bag, whether you have water in it or not, it's just not gonna do that. So um, get yourself a good ice pack. All right, let's see whether I think, boy, I kind of whipped through those. What time is it anyway? I don't know, okay. So thank you for coming to the workshop. I hope this was helpful. You can always message me through the Body Harmony Facebook page. If you have questions, you can call the office, uh, schedule an appointment for some chiropractic care, acupuncture. I just brought a massage therapist in. I'm so excited. I'm starting to do needleless acupuncture, which I'm really excited about. And my my uh, patients I've been using on this week have been, have really excellent response to it. And I did it to myself, and so I'm excited about that. Uh, but anyway, glad you could join me, and I will see you next month for Lunch and Learn, third Thursday, and I'm not quite sure what it's going to be about yet, so I'll have to figure that out. All right, well, thanks, and have a great day. Bye-bye.